It's the start of the first full day at Farmer's Apprentice Boot Camp, and our 10 apprentices are about to be given their first challenge. Good morning, apprentices, and welcome to day one of boot camp on this typical pre-harvest July day. Today, we're joined by Sean McGill from Bayer. He's our expert specialist judge for today's task. Today's task is all about using technology and data to make better farming decisions. What we want you to do is to put together a plan to grow wheat here in field seven at Bishop Burton. We're gonna give you a whole load of data and you'll be expected to gather some more data of your own, including taking soil samples. Using all this information and using some very powerful farm management software, we want you to put together a cropping plan designed to maximise profits. Now I'd like to start by moving you into two teams. So please could the following five people move to the left. That's Dan, Emily, Joseph, Camilla and Tom M. That's excellent. Now within your groups, would you please choose a team captain? Are you to do with Arable? Yeah, I am to do with Arable. I will take the project manager if, yeah. if everybody's happy with that. I've got yeah. a little bit of like soil sampling experience from union stuff. So yeah, and I, could, like, I know you work. Well I've well. done a week of harvest so far. Yeah, so okay. Not so a huge amount, but yeah, we'll, yeah. we can have a project sample. Project leader, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Most Thank you for nominating me so quickly. <laughs> so, does anyone have any arable experience? I've got a little bit. Data and tech. I'm interested in. I think this task will be a lot about the gross margin and getting your costs down yeah. and your, your profits up. So I'm happy to put myself forward if no one else and then take some advice from you on the arable side and soil side and the mm -hmm. gross margin side. Yeah, okay. that sounds, sounds good. good. Yeah. I'm yeah. happy with that. Let's do that. Okay. Two competing teams, Team Tom and Team Camilla, now need some information about the field and the varieties of wheat they will choose to grow. John Falkingham and Adam Tidswell from crop science firm Bayer give some expert guidance on the wheat varieties available. There's lots to take into account, including the quality of the soil, the local climate, the prevalence of pests and crop diseases, and the costs of applying fertilizer, pesticides, and fungicides. The apprentices need to investigate the soil in which they'll be growing their wheat. John Falkingham tells them how it's done. If you go back 50 years, how did this classify soils? Now we send it to the lab, they can test it for everything, soil quality, you know, organic matter, pK and everything. But in the olden days, they had to categorise soils and obviously this country is just full of different soils. So the old fashioned way was just to get, get a, a, something, a bigger hand like that, pull it into a ball like that. And then obviously you follow a flow chart and you keep doing different things with it and the flow charts will take you to what type of soil that is. Time for Team Camilla and Team Tom to get their hands dirty. One tablespoon of soil in palm, add water, knead the soil to break it down. Soil is at proper consistency when plastic and mobile light moist putty. Does it remain a ball when squeezed? Yes. Yep. Yep. Place ball of soil between thumb and forefinger, gently pushing the soil with the thumb, working it upward into a ribbon. Does the soil make a weak ribbon less than one inch before breaking? Yeah. yeah. Excessively wet, small pinch of soil in palm of hand and rub with the forefinger. Does the soil feel very gritty? Do you want some? Uh, yes, it's, it's relatively gritty. So sandy loam, if it's a yes. Sandy loam. There we go. Has it got like a depth thing on it? The apprentices also have to investigate soil compaction and how it varies with depth, using a penetrometer, which measures how hard it is to push a metal rod through the soil. You're getting similar. Oh, yeah. There's 200. Pearl pan at the bottom or a kind of stony subsoil, so that, that's something we need to consider. Let's dig some holes. <laughs> In the soil pit, each team are looking at a cross-section of soil to see how compact the soil is close to the surface and how far down the soil goes before the bedrock starts. They also take samples to measure the soil acidity. They need to cut away at the edge of the pit to expose fresh soil and take samples from deep enough down to avoid the top layer that is washed by rain. No, that'll be spot on, I think. Yep, spot on. How I do. So yeah, soil up to the three. But this colour here is slightly seven. alkaline, so yeah. it might be seven. It's seven point five, or maybe a bit more. Maybe a bit more, yeah. Which yeah. is, you know, it's within within the range of. Yeah, it's expected for chalky soil though as well, isn't it? Chalky yeah. more alkaline, yeah. 
Innovation and technology is vital to modern farming. We have an increasing population and it's important that we maximise the yields from the land that we grow the food. Farmers today have an increasing range of technology available at their fingertips. The use of drones and satellite technology is far more precise and they are now able to field map, place pesticides accurately and fertilisers and for environmental benefits they can put them in exactly the right place at exactly the right time. Armed with the data they've gathered, the apprentices head back to Bishop Burton's technology centre to start putting together their cropping plans. They have to decide which variety of wheat to sow, what nutrients to give it, and how they're going to protect it from pests, weeds and diseases. Their aim is to make the most profit from the field. OK, a couple of bits of information. Firstly, you're going to work under a bit of time pressure. It's now just after five past two. At half past two, each team is going to have to choose the variety they're going to drill. Another piece of information, I'm going to give you some prices, which are the prices now. They may change later on, but at the moment, the price for feed wheat is £116 a tonne. The price of Group 1 milling wheat is £155 a tonne and the price of Group 2 million wheat, that's the Siskin, that's £121 a tonne. Now at any point during the afternoon, you can choose to sell some or all of your crop, even before it's been harvested. OK, good luck. So I think the key things that we want to be looking at are, well, A, do we want to go with feed or milling? Yeah. What do you reckon would grow well on that soil? Well, that's right, we need to consider I think the... feed wheat would grow better than... So if we were going to go for a feed wheat, it would have to be Reflection or Santiago, and they both have quite disease. For their cropping strategy, do the teams take a risk and go for high-quality milling wheat, the sort used to make bread, which sells for a premium, but is more expensive to deliver and may not hit targets? Or do they opt for a sturdier, high-yielding feed wheat, used for animal feed, which costs less to grow, but commands a lower price? So you take your... Uh, Desired, desired what seed rate you want per square metre, so you've got to choose one of those three. So just for example, yeah. you're doing 300, you've got a 1,000 gram weight of 50, so you work it along the chart on there, 1,000 mm -hmm. gram weight, and it comes with work out and it'll give you kilograms? 150 kilograms of seed. So if you work, pick out your variety, pick out your seed, seed slot, right. where you want to drill it, and you can work out the actual kilograms, and it'll give, that'll give you an actual seed cost per hectare. It ticks all the boxes, I think we should go with it, and hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, 5.39 litres times. So we've got 1.25 litres per hectare times. Yeah. Eagles. So that's uh, 9.975. About 10 times. Uh, it's 230. Let us know which variety you're going to yeah. choose. Would you like yeah, to? I think. Are we all happy with Siskin? Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Siskin it is. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay, team. So going for Vega. Yeah? I need a decision from you. Yeah, so we've decided to go for Graham in the end. Graham, OK. Yeah. So you're going to spend a bit of time now working with Gatekeeper to put your information into the system. You've got until 4.30, and then at 4.30 we're going to need you to present back to us your cropping plan and the reasoning behind it. Today's arable farmers have access to powerful farm management software to help them put together their cropping plans. The apprentices will be using Gatekeeper from FarmPlan, the UK market leader. It allows them to explore different options, varying the types, quantities and timings of inputs to see which approach is likely to make the most profit. FarmPlan's Ben Hatton and Charlie White brief them on how to use the software. And the clarity Hello everybody, I've detail. got some news for oh, you. Oh. <laughs> A new market update. The harvest 2017 is looking good. Wheat's at record levels. You know what's coming now, don't you? Price. OK, feed price is 122. Group 1, 148. And group 2 is 124 a tonne. One, what was group 2? 124. That's one, two, right. Four. And group 2 milling wheat is £124 a tonne. Every time the wheat price changes, the teams have to make a decision. Do they sell some or all of their crop now, or wait in the hope that the price will go up later? I think we're going to get rid of it, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. OK. The teams have made their decisions. Now it's a race against the clock to get their presentations finished. Soil samples, yeah, 
have not considered that glass okay, body. Time's up. I need your memory stick now, please, with your presence. Yeah. Can I have your USB? Yeah. That's and then we'll move over to the next room and we'll go and present. Thank you very much. See you shortly. Okay. Thank you. And relax. And relax. <laughs> it's time to take the judges through their cropping plans. Camilla's team are up first. We are looking to grow a crop of winter wheat in field seven. And that'll be a first wheat following the oilseed rate that's currently in there at the moment. They have chosen a wheat variety with good resistance to some of the most likely problems a crop will face. We chose Siskin because it's got one of the highest yields on the list. And even up north where we are here, it's still got a relatively high yield compared to the other two or the other crops we had available to us. It's also got the highest variety resistance in the two main crops that we have the issue with, septoria and yellow rust. They hope that using this variety will allow them to get away with spending less on fungicides. We were mainly concerned about um, removing any possibility of septoria getting into the crop. Um, and with this in mind, we used a fungicide um, which we applied at one litre a hectare. Um, at the cost of £3.25 per hectare. With T2, we splashed out a bit more and we bought a bit more of an expensive product because uh, T2, we found, was quite important to protect the flag leaf as this contributes 45% uh, to the yield. The field has a problem with blackgrass, a weed that can severely limit yields. The team plan to use mainly eco-friendly cultural methods to tackle it, sowing late and using a high seed rate in the hope that the wheat will smother the blackgrass. They also aim to blitz the black grass before putting the wheat in. The team reckon their approach will yield nine tonnes of wheat per hectare. This should give them a gross margin of £903 per hectare. Thank you You've done a well really done. good that job. Well good done. Now it's the turn of Team Tom to present to the judges. Like Team Camilla, they too have gone for a disease-resistant variety, hoping to reduce the need for expensive crop treatments. We had to pick one of the wheat varieties, we chose Graham. We decided to go with a, a feed wheat. Um, the reason that we chose Graham, although it's slightly lower yielding than the other two feed wheats, it's got a much better disease resistance. So we really wanted to capitalise on that um, in order to limit the amount of um, fungicidal application that we had to do. And we felt quite strongly that with that high disease resistance, um, we would be able to save the money further down the line. They've also opted to use similar cultural controls to tackle black grass sowing late and using an abundance of seed. They plan to use a herbicide called Liberator before they plant the wheat, but only where black grass is bad. It's got a high um, area of black grass, just so we're just using t uh, it on 2.78 hectares. Um, so that comes out, including the machine cost, it's £124.14 for just that little area. It's good in terms of the environment as well because it's only spot spraying, so there's less chemical released and less chance for things like eutrophication and stuff because it's less chemicals. Tom's team have estimated a higher yield from their feed wheat of about 10.6 tonnes per hectare. Taking into account their costs and the price they got per tonne, they reckon they would make a profit of £1,118 per hectare. But they recognise that in the real world things don't always go exactly to plan. We just wanted to say like that these are all good figures on paper but in real life, obviously, weather changes, weather permitting, spraying and all that sort of things will be taken into consideration sort of week by week. But obviously, it's good to have a plan to work to for the week and talk to your agronomist as you go. Uh, one potential flaw that we did recognise was perhaps because uh, there was a lot of chalk um, in the base layer, some stones had worked their way up, so we didn't know whether we were pressing into those. So if we went back and did it again, we'd probably take more samples to see that we weren't pressing on stones and that was giving us a harder, uh, high reading. With a difficult decision to make, the judges deliberate. Technically there's very little to split them apart, but we'd have to go into some very fine details in order to make that call. Mm -hmm. And both of them went for a similar broad strategy of um, not going all out for yields but trying to keep their costs down. Do you think that was a good approach? Yeah, that works very well. On one side we have a very realistic yield approach and on another we have one that's a little bit more optimistic. But at the same time, they covered all the details and everything that I was looking for in the technical approach has been ticked. I thought the second team did a better job of presenting the results back to us. Mm -hmm. uh, they did a, 
a better summary slide at the beginning and they introduced themselves to us and the first team didn't yeah. do that. Very personal. The, the knowledge of that team was about arable matters was a lot less than the first team when we have to give them reflection that they went into a lot of detail, they've learned a lot of information today. I like both sides that they've gone into cultural controls of certain grass weeds and other aspects. I thought it was very impressive for people that haven't had a lot of experience in this particular area. It's a good timekeeping as well. We put them under a fairly tight constraints there and they suddenly worked to plan, so I thought that was pretty good too. It's crunch time. The apprentices come back to hear the judge's decision. Who will win the first challenge? Boy, did you guys give us a tough decision. You both did incredibly well. We threw a ton of information at you. We gave you so many different things to think about. And I think both teams did an incredible job. And interestingly, took a similar strategy. So we drilled even deeper into the technical aspects to try and find a winner here. I'm very impressed that both sides came out with cultural controls, which is so important in modern agriculture. You've looked at the technology and you've gone into a lot of detail in information that you probably knew nothing about this morning. So we're very impressed with what you've done. The contribution over the whole day, probably Tom, I think, oh, very good, very thank impressed. You. Uh, Lucy, you're a powerhouse in there, taking on information, sifting it, working it through. And uh, it, when challenged, you backed it up with data. I like that, yeah, you, you took it mm -hmm. on, so well done for me. So a very, very tough decision, but we have to make one. There's just one team winning today. And the winner is Tom's team. Well Tomorrow brings a fresh challenge and a chance to get to grips with the workhorse of modern farming, the tractor. Yeah.